Ellum. I know, there was a lot of mortgage data, a lot of housing data. Give everyone a minute to come on in. I just wanted to know if rates were going up and down. That's all I really wanted to know. It doesn't matter. True. I think they're going down. I think he said 5% midsummer. Isn't it, isn't it good to learn how to combat misinformation? You're right. Like, it equips you with, uh, with, with, with more confidence. And mortgage uh, MBS Highway is something that we've used for years. Um, and I'm telling you, those charts, appreciation, being able to demonstrate and provide one extra tool, one extra explanation just separates you from a good to a great. From a good realtor to a great realtor. From an average loan officer to a great loan officer. So uh, Barry, I mean, I, I, I call him the OG of housing economics. He went from a loan officer to now building this amazing tool uh, that helps a lot of people. So um, ready to keep it going here. This next speaker uh, I want to introduce here. You know, this next speaker means a lot to me. He, uh, you know, he, start, he started out as my boss, um, taught me the business, mentored me for, to this day, for the last 16 years. You know, we've, we've literally made millions of dollars together. We've funded billions of dollars of loans together. We've laughed together, we've cried together, we've, we've stood up in each other's weddings. We've built an amazing company together. Um, and, you know, I've, I could probably give you a 20 minute speech, but, you know, Amir might come off sometimes as a little intense, sometimes he's aggressive, but I'll tell you what, he'll take a bullet for anyone he cares about, and he's got a heart of gold. And he gives way more than he gets. He's got a lot of intuition, he's got a lot of drive, and he genuinely wants to help people. He impacts hundreds of people around the country, and I'm pretty sure that's gonna grow to thousands of people, right? I think he's just scratching the surface. Um, I love him like a brother. Like I said, he's been, he's been someone that stood by my side the entire time, so it's an honor to be on this journey with him. It's an honor to be here with all you guys. I hope you're all finding value. And so uh, without further ado, I want you to watch this quick video and welcome my main man, Amir, to the stage. A man who served at the highest level for 20 plus years in this industry, a $1 billion branch manager, $100 million in loans originated, board of director for the Chicago Association of Realtors, the youngest board member of the Illinois Mortgage Bankers Association, co-founder of Growth Only Coaching, and an amazing husband, father, friend, and mentor, my dude, Amir Syed. Got to be all in. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. Am I on? All right. I got a new nickname as Big Stimmy. <laughs> Dude, how about Barry Hubby? Can we give him one more round of applause for Barry? Dude, what a, what a cool guy, man. What a cool guy. Definitely um, joined MBS Highway. It was a lot. It actually took me like five times to understand this presentation. But guys, I'm pumped for this segment um, because it's, uh, I'm a messenger for all of you, and I hope to impact all of you. Justin is right, I am intense, but you should be intense. You should be intense with your friends, your significant other, your career, your health, got to be intense. All right, so I'm not supposed to be here. I'm gonna section off my keynote here in three parts. One is how I got here and how I'm not supposed to be here. Today, right, I'm gonna talk about the million dollar plus loan officer. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I think is gonna happen in the future. And it's funny, Barry took the quote, the Wayne Gretzky quote, it's a famous one, where I think the puck is going in, in 20 years of doing thousands of hours of work in this business, okay? So the past, I want you guys to get to know me a little bit, all right? Because it'll tell you my story and why I'm not supposed to be here. So I was born in 1981, graphics a little jacked up, but it's all good. That's my dad and, my, and me. Uh, I think my mom's taking the picture. She knows my dad well, right? Um, it's a great picture. I, I always just, I love to stare at it. That's back in Iran. And so we immigrated here when I was five years old, four or five years old, 1985. Um, just my mom and dad, we left uh, all their siblings. I pretty much grew up with no um, family. It was just my mom and dad. And I moved a bunch of times, okay? That was our first apartment building. Then three years later, another apartment building. Another couple of years, another apartment building, and that's the little house I grew up in. 
Shout out Skokie, that's right. Um, so we went from Chicago to Skokie to Wilmette, right? But the mean streets of Wilmette, okay? So, <laughs> but what happened, I'll tell you is that I was a very bad kid. I almost got shipped off to military school. I got into a lot of trouble. Um, and my parents moved me from Skokie to Wilmette because when I was in sixth grade, I got into a really bad fight. And one of my best friends, he lived in the same apartment building. Um, that day when I had a really, my face got you know, pretty bad, beat up bad, my mom was all worried. And my friend told his mom you know, that I got into a fight. And that night was a big dance um, at you know, one of the places in the, in, you know, for our school. And one kid brought a gun and they were looking for me. And my mom found out because my friend was at the dance and he told his mom and my, his mom told my mom and my mom freaked out. And she said, we came and control this kid. He's got to go to military school. And so my dad said, you know what? He's our only son. He's got no family. It's just us. We can't, we can't you know, have, be far from our son. And they said, we got to go somewhere where we can put him around, like, you know, maybe a better influence, better environment. So they moved us to Lamette. That was probably the hardest thing for me because if you know the North Shore, uh, it's not a lot of people look like me, especially 20 years ago. So that was hard. And, you know, we were on the bottom of the social, social economical, just hanging out with the thread. So we had this little house, but I felt great. I got to move again. I already have this chip on my shoulder. I always feel like I'm second class. And now I got to just show all these rich kids that I'm not really poor. Very tough time. But there's been a lot of people that believed in me. So this man here is Mr. Jim Reardon. He um, really, really saw a lot in me. I did not graduate high school. I had a 1.7 GPA. English is my second language, and I just hate school. And, you know, I barely got a 17 on my ACT. But he always saw something in me. He was my four-year kind of homeroom teacher. And when he found out I wasn't passing, he made some moves. And he won't admit it to this day, but I know that uh, he met with my parents, and they passed me. You know, and so I was like, man, okay, now, now where am I going? Right? And so I said, okay, well, everybody goes to college, but I never liked school. And so I always worked in my dad's small business. He had a small car dealership uh, near Wrigley Field, which, um, you know, he was a legend. He, my dad is a legend. You know, some people know my dad. He's a, when people say used car salesman, it always bothers me because my dad was a used car salesman. But he was a great salesman, and he was an ethical salesman. People would come all around the Midwest to buy cars from him. One time I saw him sell a car. People, these people came back six months later and their transmission died. Six months later, he goes, it's no problem. I'll take the car back, get another one. There's about 50 stories like that. And so I love to work. I love to be around him. I was at work six days a week. So Mr. Reardon graduated me. Fast forward, I met the Chikazian family. That's my best friend, Danny. He was my, the best man at my wedding. He changed my life. He brought me to church. And once I started going to church, and I started believing in God, and I was around really good people at the church. Um, he brought me to a youth group. He changed my life. He put me on a path. I think God is important. I think God brings faith. God brings discipline. And I would be nothing without my faith. He changed my life. And my parents, remember, I come from a Muslim country. They were very, very open. They said, you know, this kid is changing. We love our son. It's Mr. Reardon and Danny. If this kid is changing right before our eyes, it's whatever he needs, just stay the course. Danny changed my life. And then I met his uncle, Dennis Chikazian. He is a Fortune 500, former Fortune 500 CEO. That big red building, CNA, used to be CNA Insurance in, um, in Chicago. He's on the board of 22 different companies. He lives in this mega mansion in uh, Wilmette. He mentored me. Every 90 days, I would go to his home. This is when I was uh, in my short stint in college. And one day I was sitting there, and I said, Mr. Chikazian, I'm really scared about what's going to happen in the future. I don't know what I'm going to do. And he goes, do you want to finish college? I go, well, that's what I'm supposed to do. He says, well, you know, I can write you a letter of recommendation to Kellogg or University of Chicago. I'm on the board there because you've got to finish college and get some good grades. And we started talking. And I said, well, what do you think I should do? He goes, I actually think you should drop out of college. And I said, OK. I will never forget that conversation. I remember like it was yesterday, what I was almost wearing. And I said, why? He said, you know, in my company, we have 7,000 employees. The highest paid people are executives and salespeople. And that right there, that one statement, that's why I hope today you heard something from someone. It legitimately changed the course of my life. I said, you don't have to go to college and, and work in corporate America 
and be rich? He goes, no. He goes, I have all those degrees. But he goes, if you learn like accounting and selling, he goes, like, those are two really important skills. He goes, maybe not accounting. You don't have to have that necessarily. But he goes, if you can sell, you'll always be rich. And the highest people at my insurance company are salespeople. I said, well, how much? He goes, multi seven figure dollar income. He goes, you should go in sales. You're really good with people and you have a lot of fire in your belly. He goes, I don't think you should go to college. That's all I needed to hear. I was out, right? <laughs> so fast forward, I wish uh, ever, is Ryan Chapman here? Ryan, where are you at, bud? That's Ryan back there. This is an old school picture. Those are all just really important to me. With the guy with the circle over his head, he gave me my first job. I was in college. And I met another Middle Eastern kid that I assimilated with. We grew up in the same kind of environment. And he had a suit on one day in college. And I said, why are you wearing a suit? He goes, Amir, why are you in college? I said, I, I'm about to drop out, you know? And he goes, you should get in the mortgage business. And I said, dude, I have no idea what that means. And he goes, just trust me. You're good with people. You'll do really well. I have an internship right now. And I'm just going back and forth to school. You should try it. I said, well, can you get me a job? He says, I know the right guys. They just opened up a mortgage company and they need a young hustler. So. I called him up and I said, Mr. Taylor, Ed introduced me to you. Can I come and interview you? He goes, come on Friday. I said, okay, what time? He said, 12 o'clock. I said, I'll be there, but it's lunchtime. Can I bring you some food? He says, no, 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 don't worry. He goes, no, don't call me Mr. Taylor. I'm only 25, call me Kevin. I said, this guy's 25 and owns a company? Wow. I said, okay. So I went. I used to get coins from my dad's um, laundry machines in his apartment buildings. I went and got all the quarters, went to the bank, got 300 bucks, bought a cheap ass suit, cheap ass shoes. And I went to Nuna Kebab, which is a famous Persian restaurant. And I bought six platters of shish kebab platters. I jumped in the car, pulled out MapQuest. Yes, that's, that's a long time ago. Went all the way to Schaumburg. I have no idea where Schaumburg is. I pull up, I open the door, I see all these fools in there, most of these guys. And they see me with two packages of shish kebabs. I'm like, I'm here to see Mr. Taylor for my interview. And they all burst out laughing. But Kevin said, you're hired, kid. I can already tell you can move right. So he hired me and I said, what am I going to be doing here? He says, you're going to be calling 300 homeowners a day and convincing them to refinance their home loan and you have to get their social security number. <laughs> I said, dude, I should go back to college, man. But I said, do these people know I'm calling? He said, they have no idea you're calling. I said, is anybody else doing this in here? He said, yes, this guy's making this much, this guy's making this much, this guy's making this much. All you recruiters out here, if you want to recruit, just show someone's pay stub in your office, it works. I said, I'm in 100% as long as we're doing things legal. He gave me my first opportunity. He taught me how to go from cold to sold calling. It was the greatest thing. In that moment, I didn't really understand it. Just like in this moment, we might have a little fear of what's going on in the market. Renee said it, right? I have a definition to that as that struggle gives success value. Thank God for our struggles, man. Because if we have a trust fund and we're entitled, that's how you get depressed, right? But thank God he taught me how to cold call because that is the best skill in the world. I can call anyone, anytime. A lot of people know scripting is my, my skill set, right? And the power of communication to basically feed into what they need, right? And deliver to them what they want. All through a straight cold call. So that changed my career. Todd Screamer, some of you guys know, at an event just like this 11 years ago, I heard him speak. He's the gentleman that taught me how to make a million bucks plus in 40 hours a week. He's a brilliant man. He coached me personally for a very long time, completely changed my life, and showed me that true change happens through accountability. It doesn't just happen by just having regular conversations. True change only happens through accountability. So I'm not supposed to be here, but my whole message is that you have to have people around you that believe in you and push you and tell you what they think is best for you, and you have to heed that advice, okay? Justin, I met, obviously. He's one of my greatest friends. He convinced me to coach. He completely changed my trajectory as well. Here I am, hopefully multiplying myself because great leaders multiply, you understand? So I'm hoping to multiply. And he convinced me to coach and now the journey continues. So today, right, I run three seven-figure businesses, high school dropout, English second language, okay? I consistently produce over 100 million. I produce a lot with my branch as well, right? Our community of uh, loan officers in just 14 months is 150 students with a large waiting list. We're very selective we bring, yeah. Thank you. So, and I do believe that every loan officer and realtor should also invest in real estate, right? So I bought a 17 unit building at 25, I bought a 28 unit building at 29, and the story goes on, okay? 
You have to earn, you have to save, and you have to invest, especially if you're in real estate. I think that's the future. I told Justin, I looked at him today, I said, Justin, I'm going to push you to do something. He'll tell you. I said, we should buy your daughter and your son a two to four flat in the next three to five years. You have to give your son and daughter a two to four flat. That's the future you have to do as a dad. And we're going to do it because talk is cheap. Okay? So personal production. This is my journey the last 11 years. Okay? I didn't even show before 2012. I reinvented myself in 2012. Five million, 25. Every year we incrementally went up a little bit. Last year it went down a lot. You know, market. It's all good. I had a first child, moved to three states, launched a coaching company, but I busted my ass this that year. But you see, every year it grew a little bit, right? And a lot of it was time. This is a, oh, this is an overnight success story here. The key is a lot of people have heard me say it. I think one's consistency is their character. Okay? I've seen a lot of guys come and go in this 12 years and 19 years, 20 years I've been doing this. Fly by night people. I don't like fly by night people. I like consistent people. Right? When the going gets tough, right, you got to stay the course. You understand? And so there was a lot of pain through this. And I know that what I coach now, I know with sheer certainty I can get people there in half the time. Okay? Because there were some things that I was not a good student during that journey, but I was consistent though. I showed up every day. Okay? So revenue is made in top markets. Reputation is made in bottom markets. I'm a very big believer in this. This is one of my favorite... Uh, like graphs, right? Everyone loves the up and to the right. But if you look closely, I put a circle over it, it's that little dip right there. The little dipper. Everyone overlooks that little part. That's my favorite part right there. And Barry touched on it as well, and I was like, man, that's exactly right. All the investment real estate I bought was in down markets, okay? The times after busts or market corrections is when my income sky skyrocketed. This is the time right now where I get very excited. See, recessions are only just mindset. I have a very paradoxical mindset. I think, okay, it's booming. I need a little paranoia. Because if it's this good, it's not going to be this good forever. Let me really, really tighten up my belt because profits mass problems. Okay? When things are receding, I get very excited because I know that there's more opportunity out there. It's all mindset. Okay? So this is an amazing time to be in this business. Everybody was freaking out in 2008, right? But the guys that doubled down, the gals that doubled down, they increased. You, you have to see these market shifts in order to see an increase, okay? So a lot of the coaching students have heard me say this the last couple weeks. I'm a very big believer of working days and thinking decades, okay? So when I got into the mortgage business, it'll be 20 years next month. I'll never forget. I lived at home with mom and dad until I was 27, by the way. I was a good Persian boy, okay? So. I was living at home, and I'm like, man, where am I going to be in 10 years? Where am I going to be in 20 years? I said, I'm just going to stay the course and do this, do this job every single day, right? I would work really hard in the days, but I'd say to Mir, soon as times get tough, this is temporary. We got to look far ahead. Got to work in days, think in decades, guys. This is a, hopefully it'll make a big impact on you, okay? Now, this, let's talk about it. The loan officer development process. Sorry for the uh, editing issues. It's all good, right? I was thinking about my career the last 10 years, and I wanted to just visualize it and map it. And it's in your guys' workbook, okay? So you guys can take it home with you. Here is level zero, okay? And I did not skip any of these steps. This is not even on the lobby. This is in the basement, okay? This is also for realtors, okay? So look it. Some of you guys will know what I'm talking about. Level zero, it is freaking chaotic. Fear-based, it's where we all start. I gotta close business. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna pay, I gotta pay my bills. I don't got a salary no more, right? It's a very scary part. Unpredictable, zero team, zero time blocking, very little referral partners, very low sales skills. We think we got sales skills, but we really don't. It's all sheer charm and personality, okay? <laughs> leads, we're generating less than 10 leads a month, and we're not making you know, the money we wouldn't necessarily wanna make, right? Now, level one. We're finally coming out the basement, in the elevator, going to the first floor. I'm in the lobby, right? It's very reactive, right? So now it's not as chaotic, but we're reacting to everything coming to us. We're learning to sell and some of the basic operational structure of business. See, I want everyone to understand something in this room. If you think you're a realtor, and if you think you're a loan officer, you are confused. You and I, we are business people. You understand? We are business people. We're not realtors and loan officers. 
or business people. To be successful globally, you have to have a lot of business skills, not just doing a loan and not just closing a real estate transaction. You understand? So I want you guys to remember that. Now, we're fighting fires. We don't really have a, a real team, right? Zero time blocking, three to four accounts, five face-to-faces a week. We're starting to talk to some people. We're generating some more leads. We're about to hit six figures, all right? Level two, this is where a lot of people do not grow past level two, and I'll show you why here in about one minute. So we're a little more proactive now. We're not as reactive, okay? So I'm gonna have to look up here. So we're getting a little more confidence. We have an LP2 or an RP2 if you're a real estate agent. What is an LP2? Is a loan partner two. This is like the nurse to the doctor, right? This is someone that can do the cash credit income analysis. This is someone that can help you with your uh, buyer appointments, right? Or a con- co- contract management transaction coordinator. They take all that stuff off you, right? They free up 40 more hours. You're getting some more referral accounts. You're starting to generate 40 leads every single month. We're cracking six figures minimum, okay? Now, the highest income skill in the world is selling. I told you a little bit earlier how a Fortune 500 company CEO told me that, and I believe it, okay? Selling is the most important skill in the world. Selling is how you present yourself, how you communicate people, emotional intelligence, okay? The hardest income skill is scaling, right? Do a lot of you struggling here with delegating? Yeah. I used to be a uh, deleg- uh, 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 control freak holic, right? Literally, I would grab the phone from people's ears. Justin, no, poor Justin, man. He's been with me for so long. He's seen so many evolvements of me. I used to have a desk that oversees everybody. No one could do it as good as me. Legitimately, I was so controlling. But I said, this is crazy. I can't scale. So look at what happens in level three, okay? Loan officers, realtors. We start to get leverage. We always hear this buzzword, leverage, leverage, leverage. Well, what does it mean, right? You start to get more predictable results. Selective expansion. The word selective is very important, okay? What that means is you get to start picking who you want to do business with. Think about that, okay? You decide who you want to be do business with. You fire now some clients, okay? You decide, I don't need to call this account. I get to decide who I, where I want to expand and not just have to go to places and beg when I sell. Never, ever lie when you sell. Never beg when you sell. You understand? So you get to be selective. So, You start to have more time blocking. You're directed by your time of where you need to be and what you need to do. You're not running around like a crazy man. You start to get more referral accounts. You start to see more people face-to-face because the magic happens face-to-face. You start generating more business. Now you're cracking some good income, 250, okay? Level four is scale, right? So we go from leverage to scale, okay? A very fun time. Only about, in my opinion, less than 10% of loan officers and realtors can get to level four. About 80% get stuck in level two, okay? Because they have a hard time delegating. Nobody can do it as good as them, okay? So when you get to scaling, you have a real business that can operate without you. You have to ask yourself, if I go out of town for two weeks, can my business operate without me? If it cannot, you're a slave to your business. You don't have a business, okay? Now look at I'm not talking down to any of you, believe me. There's a lot of people that know me. It took me a long time to get here. In 2012, I was in a hotel room on vacation with two monitors and I never left the hotel room. It was just like I have a different, I'm looking at mountains instead of looking at you know, skyscrapers in Chicago when I was living in the city, right? Nothing changed. I'm like, I'm just having dinner at night in the Scottsdale. And I did like a million in volume that month. Fast forward nine years, my beautiful wife and I go to Italy for a month and we hit 20 million. It gets easier the more volume you do. The hardest to go is from zero to 50 million as a a loan officer and about zero to about 12 million as a realtor. It's hard, but once you can hire a good staff and get attuned with them and create processes, that's where the fun really happens. So listen, everybody in this room, I want you to remember you're a business person, okay? And when you get to level four, your business should operate without you. That's a real business. The business is not about you, okay? So you have a developed love-based team. If you see me with my team, two of my team members are here, I love them. And I mean unconditional love. They need anything from me, there's no questions asked. Ask them, they'll tell you my relationship with them. 
I love them. It's more developed now, right? LP1, RP1 for realtors, right, is a loan partner one. This person is like your receptionist. They handle your new leads that come in, they schedule, they handle your database, right? How many of us in here wish we did a better job with our past clients, right? We work so hard for new clients, we forget to keep them. You have to outsource that, right? They handle all your emails. I hate email. I'll show you here in a chart in a second how that works. That's what that front-end assistant does. Then your LP2, as I mentioned, does cash credit analysis, does your transaction management if you're a realtor. Then your business starts to take off when you hire inside sales assistant that calls your database and schedules annual real estate review calls, annual mortgage review calls. That's your residual income, okay? That's your residual, residual income. So if you're a real estate agent, working with buyers is your salary. If you're a real estate agent, working with sellers is your bonus. If you're a real estate agent, annual real estate review calls is your residual income. Your passive income is when you own real estate. It's the same thing with lenders. Lenders, purchase business is your salary. Lenders, refinances is your bonus. Lenders, your annual mortgage review call is your residual income. And lenders, your passive income is when you own real estate as well. You got to walk the talk, okay? Some of you young guys in here that do not own yet, young loan officers, young realtors, it's okay. But you have to do everything you can. You cannot be working at J. Crew wearing Abercrombie. You got to own real estate to sell real estate and do everything you can to get there, correct? And you can use your real estate commissions, I just read, Emmett in the guidelines, for a down payment. So you got no excuse, get there, okay? Now look at, you're working 40-ish hours a week, 10 referral accounts, 20 face-to-faces, you're generating some great leads, you can go on vacation and you're making a good income. This is all possible. The final stage is when you are able to multiply yourself. You have a business that not only operates without you, but grows without you. Now look at, in this room, there are people here from major mortgage companies and major real estate companies, okay? If all of you thought who the CEO of the company was today, and you had their name in mind, do you know if they show up for work today or not? You have no idea, but you're still working, and they're getting paid off you. They're winning the game, correct? You can do the same thing with your sub-team. Don't ever forget that, okay? So look at, you know, now when you're multiplying, you have a team captain that can finish your sentences, can oversee the entire team. That's Suzette for me. She's my right-hand person. She started off as an admin with me seven years ago, and I poured into her. She can finish my sentences. She knows more about guidelines than me. I'm giving her my entire mortgage business, okay? She's earned it. She's a team captain, and she's going to take over the team. Outside sales assistant for a lot of realtors and loan officers in here. An outside sales assistant goes out 40 hours a week, prospects, and fills the top of the funnel with leads. They go out there, they have 30 face-to-face -face meetings, 10 lunches with people, 100 conversations. Their full-time job is to fill the funnel and represent you. They're like an account executive. That's the future of big teams. That's how you see these loan officers doing big volume, these realtors that are doing big volume right, because they have outside sales assistant getting business. Katie is my girl that does that for me right now, okay? Then you start to hire some loan officers or junior realtors. This is where a lot of people make a lot of mistakes, okay? They want to hire loan officers or junior realtors at the beginning because they just want to make money. But dude, you got you, you to gotta walk the talk first. Take care of yourself. That was me pre-2012. I'm going to have a lot of guys and I'm going to motivate them and that, I'm not even doing what I'm saying. I'm a fraud. People are attracted to top producers that are walking the talk and then you go out there and get loan officers, okay? For the most part, I know some great managers that did loans in the past and they have a teacher's heart. But if you're looking to be, bring a small group of loan officers, either they need to be professionally coached or you have to coach them yourselves and you have to walk the talk at some point recently in your career, if not actively, okay? That's the key. Right? And now you start making residual income and you bring them up and you start making more than a million bucks a year. All right, so I like to run my business like a Michelin star rated McDonald's, okay? High volume, high quality, okay? McDonald's, they don't have the best cheeseburger, but they got a great system in place, right? It's so process oriented. So I like high quality, high volume. And that's what happens when you get a team. You don't need to give up quality as you do more volume, okay? Now, there's a line, let's use this cool-ass pointer here, right? This line right here, 
This is where a lot of people get stuck. Because what happens is you go from okay sales skills to top-notch sales skills, and you know how to scale and hire the right people, right? You know how to scale and hire the right people. A lot of people get stuck here, okay? And I'll tell you exactly how to break through this here in a little bit, okay? Now, in your workbooks, you have this. You guys can take this, date it, and you're gonna have to figure out what it is, right, that you wanna work on. Every level up, though, it takes faith, and you're gonna be scared. I promise you. I was scared launching Growth Only Coaching Company, right? Because I said, man, I'm giving up my business, but I wanna level up. But I had faith. I said, I'm just gonna rest on everything that I've done in my career. I'm gonna bust my ass. I'm gonna get great mentors and coaches to tell me how to build this, right? And I'm gonna have to multiply. I have to give up the known for the unknown, but that's how we grow. Because I said in five years, I'm not gonna enjoy this. I'm gonna level up, right? So that being said, this is an exercise I had some of my students do. I did this early on, okay? You got to find your zone of genius. Frank Sinatra did not move pianos. He showed up and sang. What does this mean? You got to sit down and create four quadrants. On the right is love, left is like, hate, dislike. You got to sit down and say, what do I love about what I do every day? And write them down. For me, I love to coach. I have a teacher's heart, my mom was a teacher. You can't fake the funk, I love it. I love to create content. I love to be working. Oh man, I just learned this today. I'm gonna share with everybody. I love it. I love acquiring customer, new customers. I'm a hunter at heart, not a farmer, I'm a hunter. I love to go out and meet new people and convince them to do business with me and be my friend, right? Securing large whale accounts. I like big accounts, okay? Generate a massive quantity of leads. I'm a rainmaker, I love to generate leads, okay? I like to network, I like to team build. I love BPI, business process of improvement. I'm a wrench, I like to tidy things up and give a great experience. I love standard operating procedures because I'm a businessman. Okay? So I love to live in the love and the light. I hate cash credit income analysis, blow up pipeline loans, pipeline management, administrative work. I hate rate shoppers. I hate emails. And I l hate dislike royal. I should be in the, in the hate, right? This loyal referral partners. Because you all relate to me? Yeah. Right? Okay. So what happens is we have to find out how can I only do what I love to do and delegate all the other stuff? Because I got people on my team that they actually like emails. They like sitting in there. Jake on my team, he's here, he's a killer, right? He, he, he likes the cash clinic analysis, he's freaking good at it. I, I ask him guideline information, that's my, that's my guy, man. He loves it. Matt Hudak in my branch, he's the pipeline manager, he freaking loves it. He has his MBA, he loves managing the pipeline. Like he gets as excited as I do, talking about these other things. So we found a great team, right? Shout out Chicago, Jordan couldn't win without Pippen and Rodman. It's true, I'm a big sports fan. Right? But when we start doing all these things, we end up being miserable after a while, and our families start to feel it, and we get burnt out, and we don't have fun anymore. Okay? So we have to always think about that. So you gotta find your comfort zone, which is your zone of genius. Zone of genius is it's a physical and mental space where your interests, passions, and skills converge to make you unstoppable in your performance. Okay? You cannot take a Ferrari and go off-roading with it. A lot of you are Ferraris and you're going off-roading. You're not built to go off-roading if that analogy makes any sense, okay? Now, what's gonna happen tomorrow, prediction? So I think it's gonna be a lot of realtors and loan officers speaking one to many, leverage, big audiences, right? Just like this, a lot of direct-to-consumer things. So if your loan officer is in here, it's a lot of content, organic content marketing. You have to be seen before you're known, okay? So we made the announcement earlier that Mo is, you know, we're in, we're in the works. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Right? But it's being seen before you're known. The old school way is to be known, liked, and trusted. The new school way is to be seen, known, loved, and trusted. Okay? That's the new school way. Your reputation precedes you. People have seen you, and they've already trusted you. And it's easy. Okay? Now, I think webinar funnels and target marketing, Justin and I are pouring thousands of dollars right now as the guinea pigs to bring thousands of home buyers across the country into these webinar funnels. It's going very well. We're very excited to release it to our community soon, but I think that's the future, is loan officers have to source business for realtors. I think realtors have to be licensed in a few different states, loan officers as well, and I think realtors should put content out there and drive people into webinar funnels and have 10, 20, 30, 40 qualified leads. 
That's the future, okay? Which I'm not gonna go too much in detail today, but I'll tell you where that's where the future is going, okay? Now, traditional modern loan officer, this could be traditional modern realtor as well, okay? So, number one is brand. The old school ways, right, of I love my company, you are the company. The traditional person thinks my company brand is greater than the personal brand. It's not, people buy people, they don't buy companies and it's becoming more real. Look at Marcus by Goldman Sachs, Siri, Alexa, Mr. Cooper, all these big companies are coming out with first name basis because people want to feel like they're talking to someone. That's what these marketing geniuses are doing, okay? It's visibility, I talked about that, I don't want to be a dead horse. Process, okay? Consumer, realtor, LO, all you LOs out there, you got to go get consumers first. You got to refer your realtors, okay? Got to get referrals from your realtors and you got to make money for your realtors. You got to generate business for them. Licensing, the old school way is minimal states. I think where we're going, I think a lot of loan officers need to be licensed in multiple states. COVID was a curse and a blessing. The blessing was we can work anywhere, wherever we want. That laptop lifestyle for a loan officer is real. We're so connected to millennials across multiple state lines and we can hedge, right, with our local markets by multiple licensing. Operations, this one gets me all the time. This business is so broken, the real estate and loan officer business. It's so back heavy, especially for loan officers. It used to be a rapper and a DJ, a loan officer and a processor. But now you have back end, right? The back end is once a contract comes in, then you have a processor and then another processor takes it all the way to closing. Well, dude, I don't like that. I think you need a front end receptionist and a front end nurse to free up the loan officer to go out there and do a lot more business. They gotta be front end operations heavy, okay? Community, what fra uh, COVID did is it isolated and fragmented. I know when I got in the business, like a lot of you, we'd go in the office and shadow a top producer, right? We shadow a top producer and say, man, we see another producer, like I have a great relationship with Sam Sharp. Sam Sharp is here, this guy is a legend loan officer. Every time I talk to him, my IQ level goes up. But I have to reach out to him. If I was in the office with him, I get to hang out with him. But we're isolated and fragmented. I take two minutes with Sam, my IQ goes up 30, 30 notches. We don't have that anymore. The future is loan officers and realtors and coaching communities with a lot of accountability, okay? Now, as I wrap up, this is a bowling alley, obviously, okay? I will tell you, I coach some very driven people, okay? Most people are drifters. Some people, they're very driven. Very few people are directed. I used to be a very driven person. I, like, this is, a, this is an analogy. I be the guy that comes in a bowling alley and I wanna see what everyone's bowling shoes are, what kind of bowling ball they're, they're rolling, all the pins are going crazy. I'm like, oh my God, okay, that guy's doing that, I need to do what he does. Oh my gosh, that guy's doing that, I need to do what he does. But what happens is when you stay in your lane, those two bumper guards there, those alley protectors, those are your mentors and coaches in life. They tell you, dude, this is the ball, don't worry about that lane, don't worry about that lane. All I want you to do is just roll this ball and let, keep it going forward, we'll knock one pin or we'll knock 12 pins, right Julian? That's the key. That's what great coaches and mentors do. If it wasn't for my coaches and mentors, I would not be here and I'm not supposed to be here. So if you don't have these people in your life, that bowling ball is gonna end up in the gutter a few different times and there's no reason to do that. There's no reason to do that. They keep you in lane and focus. You don't get shiny object syndrome, okay? So that being said, was that a good presentation by the way? Yeah, okay. I'm not gonna lie to you, I, I literally took wait to the last minute to create that thing, because I was like, I'm gonna do perfection procrastination, but I said, I'm gonna just put the journey together, you know, and figure out where my road bumps were. So what I'll tell you guys is this. If there's anything you take away from that, you will be successful by yourself. No doubt about it, because if you're in this room, I told you at the very beginning, I haven't met all of you, but I already know, this is the right room to be in, okay? I like to be in a room like this. I like for people to take the time and make the investment in themselves, okay? Edu education starts when real education ends, okay? So when school ends, school really should start. This is school, right guys? You're here, you saw all these people on stage, I've seen some successful people in this room, you're investing in yourself. How to accelerate it though, is to be around a lot of successful people. You tell me what to do, and I'll do it, right? So that is the future, guys, is how you accelerate time. A lot of people spend 
money, spend, spend a lot of time to save money. But now it's, how can I spend money to save time? And the fastest way to do that is get people around you that believe in you, may not tell you what you want to hear, but they tell you exactly what to do that's good for you, and you save years of agony, okay? So that being said, thank you for listening to me. Very much appreciate it. I'm going to bring up now, this is my favorite part of the event, okay? I'm going to bring up Justin and Alex. They're going to come up. We each picked one student in our program this past few months that really stood out. And we have something called a Go-Getter Award. Our coaching company is called Growth Only Coaching, okay? But we're thinking about really formalizing, switching it to Go, G-O, Growth Only, okay? And I like the word Go. So we have this Go-Getter Award. Each guy is going to pick one student, and they're going to describe why they did so well. They're going to come up and get this award. And then we have one Outstanding Achievement Award. Man, I can't wait to give this out. There better be a box of tissue up here, okay? Because this award is for the one standout student that literally would run through a wall for anything we said. So Alex will go first, then Justin, then I, okay? And then when you hear your name as a student, you're going to come up here, and I hope you're not afraid of public speaking because you're going to have to give out a 90-second speech, right, of why you're a winner, okay? Alex. Awesome. So uh, the award uh, that I'm presenting to uh, one of the students, um, before I tell her name, the reason is, is she is putting in a lot of work. Day in, day out, I'm seeing the sales activity tracker being filled out, and she is very coachable in actually doing what we are preaching for our students to do. Week in, week out, and not a single week has gone by where she has not done the work. So without further ado, this award goes to Candace Smith. Here comes Candace. So Candace was a former financial planner. Alex was a former financial planner that left a career with a wife and kid on the way at 32 to get into the mortgage business. Alex did 100 million in six years. So. Got it. Okay, so you know we put a lot of thought into this, um, and as some of you know, you know different students have had different coaches over the last you know 12 to 18 months. The person that stands out to me the most, um, she's a mother of five. Her husband's a veteran. They serve the community. They give away a ton of the money that they make, and in four years they've helped hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of families, um, and they have the biggest hearts of people you'll ever meet. Joy Francisco. You gotta, you gotta give her a microphone. She got a speech. Do we have a microphone for Joy? I want, I want Joy to say a couple words. So think back to 2006. Um, if you bought a home, that was around the time that we bought a home. And my husband and I sat in the corner of a builder's office, uh, found a lady who we saw a sign, um, and we called her and just said, hey, we think we're ready to buy a house. Now, we had perfect credit scores, we had money in the bank, and um, we were a great profile, buyer profile. And we went into a builder's uh, office, and they said, hey, you're ready, you're qualified, purchase a home. Now, if you know anything about veterans, they qualify for most qualify for a VA loan, and we ended up getting an FHA loan. And little did we know, we spent thousands of dollars that we didn't have to. Fast forward a few years, we get another home, and um, we were educated this time by an incredible broker, a real estate agent who is our top referral partner now. He's been in the business for 17 years. But that's how we got into the industry. Fast forward in 2019, my husband was going through a very difficult time with his health. Um, I was a teacher, and we didn't know what was going to happen. And so we knew we needed to get out of the rat race to truly make a difference in our lives, in our children's lives, and other people's lives. And that's how we found the mortgage business. And so, Paul Francisco, will you stand up? <laughs> he is the reason I quit my job as a teacher. And then fast forward to 2022, is that when I started with you guys? Yeah. I was scared. 
I was really, really scared. When everyone was living high on the hog, we were just getting started in 2020. And then 2021 rolls around, we get some success. And then 2022 comes, and I'm scared to death, you guys. We have never lived on commission until now. And so if you know anything, growth only holds us accountable to the promises we make to our families, to our clients. It holds us accountable to the best that we can be for others. It's filling our cups so we can give to others. So from the bottom of my heart, Justin, thank you. Amir, thank you. I only found you guys because you started bringing content that I knew I needed. All right, thank you all. I love you so much. We love you. We love you. We love you, you deserve this, you earned it, okay? That's for you. Joy is an amazing person and my selection is very similar to Joy. You know, I have um, a friend of mine who's in coaching and he's single, <laughs> no wife, no kids, and all he does is make excuses. And I always use this person as uh, the benchmark. I'm like, dude, you're really good at making shitty excuses. She's really good at making shit happen. She's got four kids, dude, and she's busting your ass. Why are you making all these excuses? This person came to me about six months ago, shows up on the calls every single time, is a great listener, does every single thing I ask. Literally everything I ask. I'm like, you need to fire this person. Boom, they're gone. I'm like, I didn't mean it that quickly, right? You need to hire this person, they're hired. You need to call 30 people. This is exactly what I want you to say. And she's a $100 million producer and I just see her doing a billion one year. It's Katie Grimes. You know? Justin, you hold this one for something? Katie. <laughs> I'll hold this for you. Um, I, uh, a heads up would have been nice <laughs> here. Um, so I've coached with a lot of people over the years. Um, and the thing that I feel like has really hit home for me here is that I'm home with Amir and Justin. Um, I too am a college dropout. Um, single mom at a young age had a lot to overcome and um, I, this is my sixth year in this business and so I don't I don't know the past I don't know what happened before but all I know is what we can do moving forward and I just trust that you guys care so much about us um, and that's enough for me so Good job, Katie. I know, okay. I'm so proud of you okay? I'm so proud of you earned this okay thank you all right. Okay. Congrats. All right. So, can we put something on the screen, the monitor now, the watch that we're going to give out? Oh, yep. okay. Thank you. All right. So, how Justin and I and Alex built our business is going above and beyond. Okay. That is the invincible sale, is going above and beyond for people. There is a major issue in this country or how businesses take care of their clientele. How we run our coaching company is exactly how we take care of our clients. You understand? We go above and beyond. It doesn't need to be expensive. So this is something that I am very excited to do with Justin. This young man was our first student, believe it or not. And we're not just picking him because he was coaching student number one. When you hear his story, if he feels compelled to share it, it will blow your mind. This young man, he's like a little brother to me. Anything we ask him to do, he does it. He's such a hard worker. He is literally the definition of a grit, grind. He's a young man, he's only been in the business three years, but I would bet the house on him. And we got him this watch. I want him to wear it priorly. Chris Bushnell, come on up here, buddy. Okay. Why don't you give him the watch? And I'll get the And he's just in stunt double, as you can see. I love you, bro. I love you guys, man. Thank you guys. Say a few words, man. Ooh, so that's wow. The, <laughs> I was not expecting this. Let's give you the microphone, bud. Man. Um, man, I owe so much to Amir and Justin. I, I really do love these guys. Um, you know, like Amir had said, you know, I grew up with very humble beginnings, grew up on welfare and single parent. Um, you know, I overcame or I faced a lot of challenges at a very young age. And 
Man, you know, I, uh, I think my secret weapon has always been just to, to know that I <laughs> will outwork most people. And, you know, like, like they were saying, man, I, uh, you know, I, I really give my all every single day. But I, what, I, what I didn't have was the, the competence, right? I mean, I'm, I'm not afraid to, to cold call anybody or door knock anybody. And, really do whatever I need to do to, to, to win and to be successful, but I never know how to do it. And I literally, when I, when I met Amir and Justin, I, I started with literally zero. I, the only realtor who I knew was the guy who helped me buy my house, and he's never sent me a lead, so <laughs> we're gonna have to have a, a talk. <laughs> But Amir and Justin have really sculpted my business and, and I have a, a network of about 130 real estate agents now and you know, Amir says that I've been in the business for three years but the first two years I was a call center loan officer, right? I, I wasn't doing self-gen. So I've really, I mean, we just had this conversation a couple of weeks ago, you know, I've really only been a loan officer as self-gen for what, 15 months and I tell you guys, I remember my first day of being a, a self-gen loan officer was February 8th of 2022. And my first coaching call with these guys was February 6th, 2022. So, you know, as soon as I met Amir and Justin, I just, man, I, I believe in their vision. I would follow these guys to the end of the world and whatever they say I will do. And man, I'm just so blessed to have, have met you guys. So thank you so much. Thank you, man. Thank you, guys. Love you, brother. Okay, man. Congrats, brother. Put that in the uh, safety uh, security box. You know, tell them, okay? Thank you. All yeah. right. Okay. Don't be going on at 2 a.m. We're in that tonight, okay? Yeah. This is Chicago, man. This ain't Charlotte, bro. Okay? <laughs> He's gonna be going to the clubs, throwing his rolly in the sky.